Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Harald Lielö. I'm uh, In this class, I'm a guest lecturer. Uh, only meeting you for, for this seminar today and, uh, and uh, one lecture on maritime issues later on. Um, this is not supposed to be a pure lecture today. This is called a seminar. And the idea behind a seminar is that you are also going to contribute on the way. Uh, the main point of, of today's seminar is to get you started with this essay writing, which is 30% of your exam in this class. So it's quite an important task to, uh, to write a good essay as uh, the bit of coursework that you are doing here. Um, a few words about my background. I'm, uh, I like to call myself a transport economist. I, I have a major in economy from the University of Oslo. I've been uh, working as a researcher at something called the Institute of Transport Economics in Oslo for a few years before I started here. And later on I've, I've done a PhD in engineering, so it's a bit of a mixed background. Um, what I'm going to say today is uh, partly based on my own experiences from tutoring student work over 20 years uh, and it's also partly based on some external sources. But you seem to be a great class from many corners of the world, are you? Where do you come from? Come on, Brazil. countries. Brazil? Brazil? The whole class is from <laughs> Brazil, is it? <laughs> Which other countries? France. 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 Great. China. Germany. China, Germany. Any more? Norway. Norway. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> okay. Um, I've uh, uploaded this note on the front as well, but uh, for once I've I made a printed copy. This pretty much covers what I'm going to say today. Um, if there are fellow students who are not present, you're, you're free to take an extra copy for them. Um, we will start with a few of the formalities related to this particular essay. This note here is, is slightly more general. Uh, I use it in, in uh, a couple of other settings as well. Um, so. We will start with the framework of the essay. Is there a bit too much light on? Maybe. Okay. There's a danger of you falling asleep this early in the morning, but we'll keep you awake. Okay. Uh, in this setting, you're supposed to work together in groups. Uh, this is not an individual assignment, and uh, the group size is either two or three. So you need to start thinking about who you want to work with. Um, and uh, we don't want bigger groups than three, because then our experience is that we always get a free rider, a person who is not contributing to the group. So it's quite important that all of the group members do a bit of work and uh, it's always an extra challenge to, to work together in groups rather than individually uh, but this is also part of what you're supposed to uh, gain experiences from. The length of the essay is uh, formulated in the number of words and you don't have to count manually in Microsoft Word, you can uh, <coughs> easily get the number of words. Uh, I always get the question now, how many pages are this? And of course this depends on the sizes and the margins and the uh, illustrations and things like that. But um, as a rule of thumb, a full written page is somewhere in the area of three to four hundred words, words. So that would give you an idea about the size of your assignment. The reason why we use the number of words is to avoid having very specific regulations related to the size of the fonts and, and margins and, and all these questions that we get. Slightly bigger if you're three students together. 
uh, and you should stick within this range. Um, normally, students at the beginning of such a process are worried about the lower limit. At the end of the process, the problem is the upper limit. Because uh, it isn't that many pages, and to write interestingly about the subject, you will need a number of pages. But you're also supposed to stick to the upper limit. So we won't make a big problem out of 6,100 words. But if it's approaching seven, eight, nine thousand words, then it's a problem. You will have uh, uh, this will be taken into account when the, when the grading is done. So you shouldn't exceed the upper limit uh, by by many words, at least. Okay. As I said, this counts 30% of your final mark, and there is only one grade given per group. So if the group gets a B on the essay, this will be weighted with 30% against your individual exam. And that's your only, the, the combination of these two grades is the only official grade in this class. So the, the grade uh, for the essay and the grade for the exam will not be on your transcript or records. It's the combined grade. That's the only official grade, but you can ask the lecturers afterwards about the mix, so you get an idea. But that's not an official feedback, that's what you will get just by communicating with uh, the grader. So it means that if the, the paper, the group exam, gets a B and you get an A on your exam, you will have an A because this counts 70%. Okay. <coughs> Two important deadlines. September 25, that's not too far in the future. You're supposed to select the topic and have a brief outline of what you're planning to write about within a couple of weeks. And then the submission deadline is before the exam period starts, November 28. So we'll be finished with this before the exams um, are starting. But this is an absolute deadline. This is part of your exam, so all the exam regulations pertain to this. So, so if you are not able to meet November 28, you will normally fail. But if you have, um, if you are getting ill the last week before submission, you need a doctor's certificate to get a few extra days. So this is, this is not something that we could be flexible on. It's not fair to the other students if we say to one student that you can have an extra week. So we will be very strict about that deadline. Uh, the hand-in folder in the Fronter system will be closed after this. So it's not physically possible to upload after that deadline. So a piece of advice would be to generally aim for one day before or something like that so you don't uh, have technical problems or, or things in the last minutes. Okay, the only accepted way of handing it in is in the Fronter folder. You will have sort of a practice uh, and trial with this when you are uploading the outline, so you know the technicalities of doing this, and if you have problems with the technicalities, you should talk to either the lecturers or someone in the administration to, to have some help. It's not all that complicated. But it's important that you do it and that you use the relevant folder in the front of the room uh, for doing this. Um, one of the reasons why we don't accept uh, sending this in, e uh, in an email and so on is, of course, that it's, it could be that this uh, gets lost in the communication somehow. But it's also because we have an anti plagiarism tool linked to fr Fronter, which your essays will be run through. I will come back to that. But uh, this is why we need the electronic copy like this. OK, then I will start with the end of the process, uh, which might be slightly odd. I will say, what would the graders of your essay put <coughs> the emphasis on when they are grading it? 
which are the essay assessment criteria? Well, of course, according to the title, this is supposed to be about something, and uh, the whole essay needs to be relevant to that title, well focused on the topic selected. Might seem self-evident, but sometimes we find that there is one um, selected topic and then 80% of the pages is about something on the side on that topic. That's not good, of course. So keep it focused. Does it show understanding and a proper analysis? Is the essay analytical in style and approach? What could we mean by the word analytical? Any idea? What would the opposite of analytical be? Theoretical. Once again, please. Theoretical. Theoretical? Yeah, well, could be, yeah. I would say descriptive. What is the difference between descriptive and analytical? Yeah. You said thinking about things. Yeah. Well, what is that here you are writing <coughs> about something? Here you are asking questions. OK, if you are one of the Brazilians are, are writing about the oil and gas exploration activities planned for Brazil, you could write pages and pages about this. Uh, this is the geography of it. This is the water depths that they are exploring the oil. Uh, these are the oil bases and things like that. <coughs> That's descriptive, just describing, writing about something. You're supposed to have an analytical approach, asking questions. What would the optimal structure of oil bases be in the Brazilian case? Uh, how could we make the logistics of the upstream oil and gas activities uh, more efficient. Is the Brazilian approach different to the Norwegian approach? These are questions. And that's what ensuring in an analytical approach. <coughs> it's easy to write a descriptive thing about something. This is what it's all about. But you need to have the angle of a researcher trying to ask some questions and find some answers. And it's inevitable that you have to describe something before you can ask the questions, but you shouldn't have 90% of your essay just being descriptive and then a few questions at the end. This should be the, the guiding uh, angle of your thesis make it analytical in style and approach. And we are also trying to look at the learning outcomes of this uh, essay writing. Does it show, th does the text show that you've actually understood the problem that you are analyzing? Do you show interpretive skills, uh, um, could say, uh, analytical skills, and this is what we are looking for. And then we also have a number of <laughs> techniques. The, the craft of being a good researcher is actually about some basic skills when it comes to the way you should write a research paper. Um, 
and the main point here is that you use proper sources and that you give proper references to those sources and that you have sort of thought about is this a valuable source, is this a quality source that you have a critical approach towards the sources. Does this source represent the stakeholder? <coughs> What's the stakeholder? What's this? Any idea? It's not the word we use in everyday language. But any idea? Exactly. Great. <coughs> Very good. And could we think about examples? If we are studying the environmental impacts of road transport. Could you think about information, information sources, which we would call sources provided by a stakeholder in such a subject, if you're looking at environmental aspects of road transport? Who could be a stakeholder related to that topic? Yes, please. Yeah, okay, forwarders. Let's say that these forwarders has a union of forwarders in, uh, in Norway or some other country, and they have a web page. And they will present some information about the environmental performance of road transport. And you as a student find this, ah, great, this is something I can use in my, my uh, essay. A lot of information about the environmental performance of road transport from the web page of the forwarders, the ones who are sending the cargo. Should you be critical towards this source? Yes. Why? Because it's subjective, it's not objective. Okay. What, what would their interest be? Yeah, they would be interested in promoting their activities as environmental friendly. And maybe they are quite selected in selective in the way they have chosen the use of statistics or, or evidence. So I'm not saying that you couldn't use that as a source for your essay, but you should have a critical approach. You should tell us this is information provided by someone who has a potential interest in presenting this in a certain way. And then, exactly as you said, try to contrast this, this with other sources. Is it likely that this is a biased way of presenting it? Or does it seem to be all right because you have a number of other sources telling the same story? If this group of forwarders says that um, truck transport is preferable to diesel rail transport, if that's a statement on this web page, well, check out other sources. Is this, is this really true? Is this something that they could say with proper scientific evidence? Well, if you have checked a number of other valuable sources, uh, looked at uh, the Ministry of the Environment, for instance, or um, the official statistics of Norway or research institutes, and checked a number of other sources, then you know that this might be true or not. So you're supposed to have a critical approach, especially when you are looking at information provided by stakeholders. Okay, 
structure is also about the craft. You have probably written a number of papers already since you're, you've been studying for a few years. Um, sometimes I'm, also, I'm still a bit surprised that some of the basic elements are not uh, there, like uh, proper headings or page numbers and things like that. We'll come back to that. So this is also counting a little bit when we are looking at the assessment criteria. Okay, you don't have very much time for this, so it's important that you, you plan your time well. Uh, the autumn semester in particular is quite short, uh, so of course you need to avoid writing most of the essay in the late nights of November. And one piece of advice would be that searching for literature and data sources is more time consuming than you might think. So this will take probably half of your time, finding the right sources. So this is important that you get going as early as possible by searching for the relevant sources. If you want to create some sort of a timetable, you need to identify the different jobs that you have to do um, and uh, uh, set aside time for that. You have other classes as well, so as far as you know um, about the workloads of the other classes, you need to, to also <coughs> take this into consideration. And of course, the deadlines as we have presented. Might look something like this, although the dates are slightly different in this case. Uh, you have a deadline for handing in the outline. Uh, was it September 28th? Was it? What was the deadline? 25. Okay, good. You're paying attention. And the final deadline? 28th, November. Okay. So it might look like, uh, something like this. Uh, <coughs> picking the topic takes quite a bit of time. So don't get frustrated that you, you're spending uh, quite a number of hours in finding your topic. This is perfectly normal. Searching for literature takes time, L reading it, and taking notes. That's important because you will have other tasks as you are working with this. And, and if you're reading three or four papers today and then you're picking up the, this piece of work uh, next week again, you might have forgotten what you read. So making notes whenever you have read something is extremely important. And then the writing process, we'll come back to that. Okay, before we get you started with uh, your first session of work. Um, picking the topic, a few hints here. Of course, some of you might already have an idea what you would like to write about. In this class, you are fairly free to pick a topic as long as it's related to international transport supply chains. Uh, and that's a quite a wide area. I would suggest that you do a considerable amount of reading, check out what's done uh, in previous research <coughs> in the area. You might use some of the databases and just uh, use uh, uh, international supply chains or international transport or, or something like that as a search term. Of course, you can talk to the professor. This is a fairly big class, so um <coughs> he will have uh, limited time to, to discuss with uh, all of you, so, uh, but you you're still free to knock on any door, not only the professor who is in charge. You, you might get an answer that, uh, that he or she doesn't have time for you, but you're free to do that. This is very different from different countries, different settings. Here, our doors are in principle open, so don't be afraid to knock on doors and ask for pieces of advice uh, or to discuss things. But also use your fellow students to discuss it. Uh, I think that's uh, very useful as well. OK, your topic should be broad enough to address an important issue, but narrow enough to, to do it thoroughly within the limits of this, this uh, essay. Um, basically, most students choose a topic that is too big in the beginning, because you're, you're afraid that you will not have enough to uh, to write about. Uh, the problem is usually 
that uh, the issue is too broad. And if it's too broad, you will not be able to dig <coughs> deep enough to, to, to make it interesting. So fine, uh, a rather narrow um, subject. This is the idea behind an essay. Uh, the subject should reflect an arguable point, um, something that would trigger the interest of a reader. Uh, is this really interesting? Uh, is this something that has controversy? Perhaps it's a current political issue or um, environmental uh, questions are always controversial mainly. Uh, could be that it's a new topic that hasn't been looked uh, very much into and so on. Yeah, we have said focus not too big is relevant to what you plan to do, the title of course. Uh, and the title should trigger the interest of a reader. So this is something that you could try to keep in mind all the time. You really want people to, if you want people to, to read it, and of course you W uh, it would also be more interesting for the grader if it uh, has a good uh, and exciting title. Now it's time for you to work. And we do this in two sessions today. Um, first, an individual assignment. And we'll pick up what you're doing now at the end of the seminar in a group session. Then you're supposed to present to other group members we are putting you randomly together uh, for that session. Um, so your first uh, assignment now is to spend the rest of this hour, the 13 minutes that are left, uh, identifying some possible subjects related to this class uh, on a piece of paper. If you don't have paper, you can, you can have some here. Um, so please. This is uh, your task for the next uh, 12 or 13 minutes. Just put it on the middle of the sheet and, uh, and draw some lines and some reflections, some aspects. What kind of questions could you ask related to this subject? Things like that. And don't be very critical now. This is sort of a brainstorming bit. So anything that springs to mind. If you put up one, that's fine. If you have 10 different propositions, that's also fine. Up to you. But start working right away. If you need paper, come and collect it here. <laughs> 